are, what's going on YouTube and welcome back to another Destiny video. And in today's video, I want to talk to you guys about Destiny's future. More specifically, Comet, Destiny 2 and Destiny's roadmap going forward. Sure, right now it may seem like we know nothing. I mean, we haven't even got information surrounding the House of Wolves and that's only two months away, supposedly. So why am I talking about Comet or Destiny 2 when that's even further in the future? And the reason is because while we may not know specifics, we do know something that will help you picture Destiny's future going forward. Plus, E3 is in June, and if House of Wolves is out by then, which it should be, May 19th if the rumours are true, then Bungie and Activision will have something else to show. But, I'm not here to speculate about E3. I'm here to talk about this, the Bungie Activision contract. At least for the first part of the video. When this was first written up, it was sealed. But in May 2012, it was ordered in court that this be unsealed. And as a result of that, it allowed us to get a little glimpse into the future roadmap for the game. Now the dates in this are a little off, given that it was originally listed for a 2013 full release. But as we all know, it launched last year, 2014, so any dates, just add one year onto them, and that'll give us something to go on. Now, what I want to speak about specifically is the paragraph about the release plan, under section 1A. I'll read you an extract and then we'll discuss it. The release plan for the Destiny games is currently comprised of four major retail Destiny game releases, tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2013, 2015, 2017 and 2019, and five Comet releases following each Destiny game release tentatively scheduled for the fall of 2014, 2016, 2018 and 2020. In addition, as part of the Destiny games licensor shall also produce DLC releases as mutually agreed by the parties in the time periods between retail Destiny games and Comet releases. The expected business model for the product is a blend of retail packaged goods sales, subscriptions, downloadable content, value added services and microtransactions, the exact mix of which shall be determined by the mutual agreement of Licensor and Activision shall have the tie breaking vote. Now it goes on for a bit but that is the main bit I want to call out. So. Shift all those dates forward a year, and we have four packaged title releases, i.e. Destiny 1, 2, 3, and 4, coming out in 2014, 16, 18, and 20. In other words, every two years. Then in between that, we have Comet Expansions in 2015, 17, 19, and 21. And then in between Comet and the big title package releases, we have DLC Expansions. So, if you look at the model we currently have, Destiny launched at the end of last year. We then have the dot below, and we have House of Wolves. And the next rumour is Comet, which is said to be a large standalone title, which will include all the current DLC, plus add in new explorable areas, new subclasses for each class, and even new weapon classes, among other things. That therefore means that going forward, assuming the contract still applies, that will have yearly releases which will considerably expand the universe. The contract did however state that the DLC is agreed between the parties, so we may not be restricted to two DLC packs per year, that could scale up, but again it would depend. So we can therefore expect Comet this year around the same time Destiny launched last year, so that's September time, and Destiny 2 the same time next year. And then that model will obviously apply going forward. Something else worth noting is platforms. The contract only details platform specifics for the first two Destiny titles, that's Destiny 1, i.e. what we have now. Comet, Destiny 2 and any related DLCs are all to be produced for both current and last gen consoles. In other words, PS3, 4, Xbox 360 and Xbox One. The contract doesn't, however, detail plans for Destiny 3, 4 and the subsequent Comet releases. So, given that by that time we will be well into the current console generation, it is entirely possible that at that point they could drop last gen console support and continue solely on current gen platforms. However, to counter that point, again remember that I said the dates are out by a year, so it could well be that last gen support may even be cut short for Destiny 2. Only time will tell. Given that Destiny has cross generation support for accounts, this wouldn't mean that existing last gen players would lose their progress, but it would however force their hand in deciding whether or not to upgrade consoles. So there you have it, that's a bit of insight into Destiny's roadmap. Now let's talk quickly about something mentioned earlier. It stated that the Comet expansion will not only provide us with new explorable areas and obviously sizable PvE and PvP content to boot, but also new subclasses for each class and new weapon classes. Now if you look at the classes we have now, each of them is missing an element in their subclass. Hunters are missing Void, Warlocks are missing Arc, and Titans are missing Solar. So expect the next ones to fill in the gaps. As for what they are, I have no clue. Speculation wise, 
the Hunter currently has a melee class and a range class, so it would be fitting to have something that focuses on traps, and I only say that as it's fitting for Hunters and their stereotypical archetype. As for Titans, you have Offensive in the form of Striker, and you have Defensive in the form of Defender, so perhaps you could have some sort of range subclass. And as for Warlocks, you have Offensive in Voidwalker, Support in Sunsinger, so again it'll be interesting to see some sort of close quarters Warlock build for Ark. And as for weapon classes, what are we missing? Well, dual wielding for one. Hand cannons are just begging for dual wielding combos, and seeing as multi-element weapons have been introduced with Murmur, dual wielding elements for hand cannons could be amazing. On top of that, for heavy weapons I'd like to see some sort of plasma cannon, and for secondary weapons, well, there are so many possibilities. So, with all that said and done, what else is there to talk about? Well, there was that line about providing additional services and microtransactions. As it stands, everything is purchased in-game, but Bungie has a customization model with shaders that would quite easily lend itself to microtransactions. Look at how skins are sold in Call of Duty, and apply that to Destiny. Whether that happens or not, again, only time will tell, but just know that it is in the contract and is therefore on the cards for the future. And with that, that brings me to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and hopefully it helped paint a picture for Destiny's future. Let me know what you think about the potential of yearly Destiny releases, and also what you'd like to see in new subclasses and weapon types in the comments down below. And as always, if you did enjoy this, don't forget to leave a like and hit that thumbs up button. And if you're not already subscribed and you're not already part of the Arex Gaming Nation, then hit that subscribe button so you don't miss a single video. Thanks again for watching, take it easy, catch you next time, peace out.